So in today's video, we are going to learn the basic concepts of magnetic circuits. Now a magnetic circuit is made up of a closed path to which a magnetic field, represented as lines of magnetic flux, is confined. Now let's consider this magnetic circuit composed of an iron core and an air gap. Now in place of this iron core, we can have any material of high magnetic permeability. So that can be a steel and so on and so forth. Now considering this circuit, we have a coil of n number of things wound around the iron core. And let's assume that we have a voltage source that is a DC voltage source in between the core. Now this voltage source is going to drive current, say I, through the core and thus generating magnetic field around the core which sets up magnetic flux within the magnetic circuit. Now this magnetic flux flows through the iron core as well as the air gap. Now let's focus on the electric equivalence of this circuit. So here we have a voltage source V that is driving current Ci through the circuit and the resistance of this circuit is made up of the resistance as a result of the air gap as well as the resistance as a result of the iron core. So we know that the applied voltage or the source voltage is giving us the current that flows through the circuit times the total resistance that is according to Ohm's law and that is equal to multiplying I across then you have I times Re plus I times RC and thus the voltages dropped across the circuit is equal to the source or the applied voltage according to KVL and if you want to find the current flowing through the circuit then that is equal to the applied voltage divided by the total resistance. Now coming back to the magnetic circuit, the force or the source that drives magnetic flux within the circuit is called the magnetomotive force which is represented as MMF and then within the magnetic circuit we have two resistances that is the resistance as a result of the air gap as well as the resistance as a result of the iron core. Now in a magnetic circuit we call this resistance the reluctance. So in actual sense we have RA to be the reluctance of the air gap and then RC to be the reluctance of the ion core. Now the ion in this case has a high magnetic permeability which means that it has a high ability to set up magnetic flux within itself and hence has a very low reluctance as compared to the air gap which has a high reluctance and a low magnetic permeability. Now given a magnetic circuit, in this case, the magnetomotive force or better still the MMF that drives magnetic flux within the circuit is given by F which is equal to the current in the core times the number of things of the core and that is measured in amperes or better still ampere things. Now as the flux flows through the magnetic circuit, a magnetic potential drop is developed across each section of the circuit and if the circuit is homogeneous and thus has uniform cross section then what this primarily means is that the magnetomotive force or better still the MMF per meter length of this magnetic circuit is said to be the magnetic field intensity and that is represented as H and that is equal to the magnetomotive force divided by the length of the magnetic circuit and that is measured in amperes per meter or ampertens per meter. Now we also have what we call the magnetic flux density which is equal to the magnetic flux divided by the cross-sectional area also measured in Weber's per meter square and then this magnetic flux density is somehow related to the magnetic field intensity by this formula that is B equals mu naught times H and then we can use this formula to find either B or H especially when we are dealing with 
non-magnetic materials or better still free space or vacuum now in the case where you want to find the value of either b or h for a magnetic material we can't use this formula hence it is advisable to use the bh curve to find either b or h when one of them is known now the reluctance of this circuit is giving us l divided by mu naught mu r a where l is the length of the magnetic circuit and then a is the cross-sectional area and then the reluctance of the magnetic circuit is measured in ampertens per weber and then considering this circuit now the reluctance as a result of the air gap is giving us l over mu naught a while the reluctance as a result of the ion core is giving us l over mu naught mu r times a now from ohm's law we know that the source voltage is equal to the current times the total resistance for the circuit that is considering an electrical circuit now in the case of a magnetic circuit the magnetomotive force f is equal to the magnetic flux times the total reluctance in this circuit we have the total reluctance composed of the reluctance as a result of the air gap and the reluctance as a result of the magnetic core or better still the iron core now if you should multiply the flux by ra and then rc then you are going to get flux times ra plus flux times rc and that becomes the magnetic potential drop as a result of the air gap plus the magnetic potential drop as a result of the iron core now if you should add these two values then that should be equal to the magnetomotive force now what do you think will be the inverse of the reluctance now the inverse of the reluctance is called the permeance and that is equal to mu naught mu r times a divided by l and this permeance is defined as the measure of the ability of a material to permit the setting up of magnetic flux so in summary in an electric circuit we have the source to be the emf that is electromotive force and then represented as v and that is equal to the current flowing in the circuit times the resistance of the circuit now in a magnetic circuit we call the source the magnetomotive force and that is represented as f and giving us i times n and that is measured in amperes or ampertens and that is also equal to the magnetic flux times the reluctance of the circuit now the current in an electric circuit that is represented as i is measured in amperes and then in a magnetic circuit we call that the magnetic flux and that is measured in webes also in an electric circuit the opposition offered to the flow of current is called the resistance that is represented as r and then measured in ohms inside of a magnetic circuit we call that the reluctance that is the opposition offered to the flow of magnetic flux that is also represented as r and is measured in ampertens per webes the conductance in an electric circuit which is represented by g and then measured in siemens is called the permeance in a magnetic circuit that is also represented by a and that is measured in weber per ampertens so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye